I bought a second gen 12 valve two wheel drive automatic Cummins on the premise and had a blown transmission because I'm trying to fix it and hopefully sell it. I buy these trucks anytime I can, first or second gens, because I just, I love them. I don't know, I like working on them. But not too bad for a Cummins. It has 382 on the clock. That would be quite a bit of miles on anything else, but on a 12 valve, that's not too terrible bad if it's been taken care of. These are seats out of a newer model truck. I don't know exactly what, but these are not factory second gen seats. You guys know, I am a purist. I like everything factory, original, how it came. I don't like anything touched. Um, but this is, uh, I would say, sort of tastefully done. Looks like they bolt up good. They actually work. So, I mean, that's pretty legit. It's not, not a bad idea. I really like this because, you know, I'm always looking to set my arm down. I think it's funny how these trucks came with coin slots. You could put quarters and dimes and whatever in there. I can get this thing to move forward. You can see the back seat's not too bad. I don't know if that's been reupholstered or if that's just a seat out of another truck. I don't know if those are seat covers, factory seats, because usually like kind of the wrinkles there. You already know, I'm sure you're asking, what about the dash? What about the dash? It ain't pretty. But there are people on eBay who sell replacement dash covers. So you can buy a dash unit, which is like 300 some dollars, or you can buy a really nicely made dash skin off of eBay. I can't remember exactly who sells it, but it's like 150 bucks and it's pretty legitly made actually. It fits perfectly. I've done it on another second gen. The frame and everything, I mean, look at that. Look, you can actually see that bolt. Perfect. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Uh, this is a two-wheel drive automatic. This has the 47RE transmission. Uh, e means electronically controlled. The early second gens, I don't know, like 94 and 95 had the 47RH, which was hydraulically controlled shifting. Coming back here, I don't know what differential it has. Um, maybe it's a Dana 80. I, I don't know if it's got four tens or not. Coming into the motor, she's got that 12 valve P-pumped beautiful 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 i absolutely love these engines to death batteries are kind of old but uh, they still work fine uh, batteries out here don't last very long because of the heat but this truck was in prescott and the temperatures are a little better so these batteries have probably lasted longer because they were in prescott but you can tell that it has had a repaint so it was blue see there so it's had a repaint but this is like green so I don't know if like someone's replaced the fender on it, like it was blue, someone put a green fender on it and painted it white. So like this isn't a very good job right here. And then if you look closely, you can tell there's a color difference between the door and the cab. It does not have the electric mirrors, it has uh, the plastic tow mirrors that you can like fold in. And then um, she's got like the peepers right here, you know, the magnifying peepers. She's a long truck. She's long. She's almost hitting the back of my house. Bed does not look that tore up. Well, it's got a gooseneck ball hitch. And then these rails, I think, were for a fifth wheel. I don't know. Usually those rails are for a fifth wheel. But uh, I've seen these trucks and other trucks where the bed is used so badly that you can actually see the cross members. Like, the bed will be like the metal will be sagging because it's been hit so many times. And you'll be able to actually see outlines of the cross members underneath. I don't see that with this truck. Um, so the bed has not been used that bad at all. It's pretty, pretty straight, pretty straight. I did notice when I was going to buy it was that it's got bags, which I really, really like. So this truck was reasonably priced on Facebook and I'm um, like, why is it reasonably, pr reasonably priced? He said the transmission was blown. Um, I negotiated down even further because I'm like, well, that's a big boy job. That's not like tires or brakes. That's a major surgery right there. He said I was driving it and it lost all its gears. I said, okay. So I go up there, buy it, come back. And I'm today I'm starting all my checks and balances. Start it up. I'm like, well, I put it in neutral and it was like nothing was on the dipstick. So anyway, seven quarts of transmission fluid later, put her in drive. She shifts. I couldn't believe it. I said, okay, well, maybe this won't last long. I'm gonna find out what's wrong with it. Topped it off with tranny fluid, drove around the neighborhood, shifts like a dog, shifts like a friggin' rock. I mean, goes into gear, one, two, three, four, overdrive, reverse. Couldn't believe it. You don't usually get that lucky, but those are not where my problems end. This truck has some bugs that need to be worked out of it. Um, for instance. She starts up pretty good. Uh, we don't have signals up there. We don't have turn signals. ABS lights on and my brake light is on. 
Also leaks oil from the front driver's side of the motor. So I got some cardboard right here, so you can see it's already been leaking. See it? So you can see it's coming from right here. That's a lot of oil. See it coming from uh, up there? So I want to check the brakes because I want to see why those brake light. Okay. I want to see why the brake lights are on. We can put some kind of uh, motor oil honey in there, maybe Marvel Mystery Oil or something. Um, but on a motor with that many miles, I mean, you're just maybe going to have a little bit of blow by. It's just, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that bad. Okay, it's really not that bad. You know, just straighten it out. Wow, these look great. See how you can still see the line in that? If you can't see that line, that's how you know the pad's about gone, but you can see plenty of meat on those, and it's not locked up. <sighs> Brakes are working just fine. Let's go check the other side. All right, door number two. <sighs> Plenty of meat, once again. Nothing wrong with that at all. That looks great. Absolutely beautiful. Now the back brakes uh, could be a different story. So on the first gen Cummins, this drum, this drum and this piece are one. So you have to take the all these out and take the axle out, this whole thing leads into the rear end. Big old long stick, boom, pull the whole thing out to pull the drum off. That's a major pain. You lose differential fluid, you gotta reseal this. There's like 10,000 bolts going on here. These are yank off right here without taking these off. I mean, it's really, really nice. <clears throat> All right, I gotta get a hammer. So I had to get under there and unadjust the brakes and you're going against the automatic adjusters. They're only supposed to go one way, but had to kind of force it to unloosen it. I couldn't get it off, so we'll see what it's looking like. Yeah. Ooh. Well, there's your problem. Drum is completely toast. There's nothing left shoe looks okay but this one is worn down to the rivets this is about to look at that that is paper thin right there and you can see visually see see how that's worn see that gap that's absolutely terrible drum see all those grooves in there that right there This is not reusable. You can't even cut this to, to fit anymore. My screwdriver is straight. You see them, that giant gap? Yeah, that is not supposed to be like that. I'm gonna replace both back wheel cylinders, do the rear brakes, and then I'm gonna have to get another drum for this. It's probably gonna be about $100. Look at all that brake dust. Uh, that might be why our ABS and brake lights are on. I don't know though. Now it's gonna need brake parts. 
I'm gonna just let that sit right now. I'm trying to get a list of parts and stuff I need so I can just take everything apart and just go through and fix everything all at once. So we're checking out the leaks right now. And remember how I said there was a leak underneath? So this leak right here, I wiped it off a little bit ago and it's dripping so that pan gas gets leaking. That seam is uh, between the power steering pump. Yeah, you can see it dripping right now. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that power steering pump out along with the vacuum pump. I called a guy from Gould Gear looking to get, uh, I guess, the seal that goes in between that power steering pump and the vacuum pump. I've never taken one of these apart before. The power steering pump is whining when I turn it on. It's low, it's low on power steering fluid and there's pressure coming out of there. So I think that power steering pump is probably bad. And uh, the, taking the vacuum pump and the power steering pump out as a unit, I guess, is easier than taking the pump out by itself. So, um, and the vacuum pump might need to be rebuilt. I mean, 385,000 miles is a lot of miles. So I think it's good to take them both out and give them a look over. Okay, so I got everything unhooked and I'm about to pull it out. Um, I just, I didn't go over everything on how to pull it out. There's videos on there about how to do it. Um, I didn't want to bore you with the details, but I uh, got it undone and I'm just trying to ease it out without breaking anything. Good uh, Lord. What a menagerie. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, let's put this in a safe spot. Oh. The, the gentleman at Gould Gear was telling me if the killer dowel pin or whatever has came out that it'll fall in between the injection pump gear and this gear and chip some of the teeth. But I'm looking around and I don't, I don't think that's happened. All the teeth on this look good. I don't think this power steering pump is factory. I think someone's replaced this before. This is sitting in the truck like that. So this is on the bottom and this is an oil feed line. This is a 7 16 the, the line that screws to it is a, I think it's a 14. You gotta undo that. There's a bolt here and a bolt here. Some of them I think 98 and a half and later have three bolts. 97, all I know is 1997 second gen 12 valves have a bolt here and a bolt here. It was a 15, 15 millimeter. And then there's one, two, three, power steering lines. These two are return lines. I think one of these goes to that Hydra Boost brake system. And then you have a 18 millimeter here. You undo it from this way to this way. At the very end, you can undo the bolts and take it all out. So we've sat overnight now and you can see over here, all this transmission fluid has been leaking out of that pan. So we're gonna have to do that pan gasket, um, but we'll just we're gonna do the oil right now. Why do people? do this Ugh. oh that should be a sin uh. yeah she needed to be changed that's for sure this up with some uh, oil, put some oil around the lip, shove it back on. Go ahead and put this back on, tighten it up. All right, that's about all the tighter it needs to be. You don't need to get NASA involved. Wipe it, wipe it off so if it does start leaking, we'll know. Now I got that vacuum pump pulled out so there's a giant hole in the back of this timing cover. I don't know if we're gonna leak oil out of there. I guess we're about to find out. Dang, we are gonna have to wait to do that. 
instead of taking the pan off, getting fluid all over the place and having to do the pan gasket and deal with 10,000 different bolts, um, what I do, I think a lot of other people do this too, is transfer pump. <sighs> Again. Um, gotta get a point where I have some leverage. Yeah, there we go. <sighs> Yeah, look at that. She needs to be replaced. So far we have two and a half quarts, almost three. Oh yeah, baby. Use limited slip diff lube only. Okay, but that still doesn't tell me what the gear ratio is. Oh, here's another tag. Yeah, it says 354. 3.54L, right on it. I thought it was 410s. Oh well, I mean, not that I care much. I just wanted to know. I think we're getting to the end of our rope here. We can start putting the fluid back in it. Yeah. Well, these two are done. I um, think this is going to be the last one. Come on. I think we're about there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rear end is officially serviced. So we're gonna bust this tranny pan off. I got all these parts on order. I ordered it all from Rock Auto, so uh, we're just taking things apart until things come in. Oh, what the heck? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Huh. The bolts were loose. Oh, wow. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if that'll stop our leak. What the heck? Uh, let's just tighten these bolts up and let it sit and see if that stops it. Yeah, these bolts are not even tight. I'll wipe this off and monitor it because if it ain't broke I'm not fixing it and some people would say well why don't you just take it apart anyway and all this and that and it could be metal shavings down in there if the trans was blown it'd be blown I put fluid in it and it shifted perfectly one two three four no slipping reverse all that so I'm not taking it apart if I don't need to because what I've learned is is to let sleeping dogs lie because if you go messing around with stuff you'll break something that was fine just leave it be see the c-clip in this one uh, that rod goes through there it holds the e-brake in place there's supposed to be a clip on there I don't, I don't see it whoops whole kit and caboodle huh these dust boots are tore up and yeah it's just it's just time so I popped the other side of the brakes off. No need to show that. Everyone's seen brakes done a million and a half times. Now on to probably the most interesting part of the video is rebuilding this uh, vacuum pump slash power steering pump. So here is your actual vacuum pump. 
and then this right here is these this bolt and a bolt on the other side bolts this casing to the vacuum pump this is just a basically a bracket uh, that the power steering pump bolts onto and there's a shaft in the middle of this where the power steering pump connects to the the vacuum pump like uh, two ears that interlock now i've never done this before uh, I watched a few videos on it on YouTube, YouTube University, and also the guy at Gould Gear, who I'm getting the kit from to reseal the vacuum pump, kind of walked me through it mentally. So uh, we'll just dig into it. So I guess first you pop the four bolts off that hold the, uh, the pump to the uh, bracket. your pump the dog ears aren't uh, broke off so that's I mean that's a good sign but we're more concerned about the dog ears being broke off on the uh, vacuum pump I'll just let some of that drain out and I'll wipe it up oh <laughs> You know what? I don't like doing that. Um, I got another idea. Much cleaner. This has veins in it and the centrifugal force pushes these veins out when it's when it's turning they create vacuum but yeah this pump looks I don't know it looks pretty good I don't know I can kind of see where this o-ring is a little messed up so I'm gonna show you this o-ring here see how it looks good all the way around and then uh, coming over to right here it's kind of chingered up a little bit yeah, that might have been where our leak was. I'm still waiting for the kit to come in to rebuild the vacuum pump. So I'm out here at a junkyard, a guy I know. This is the bezel that came off of my truck for the dash. It's broken and his is in good shape. It's off of a gasser truck. So I'm going to pull his off, pay the man for it, and put it on my truck. Because it's little details like this that I like to get right. It just makes the truck feel more complete, you know. So I just got the kit in to rebuild the vacuum pump from Gould Gear and Electric, Murphy, North Carolina. Um, I can already tell this kit looks pretty comprehensive. It comes with a double lip O, a double lip seal. This is a seal that goes in the bushing that I press out. Here's that big O ring that I showed you guys earlier. Looked kind of messed up on mine. And then here's obviously the gasket that goes against the timing uh, case. And then here's a few spare parts in case I mess up these, which is awesome. Having these it comes with some grease. It even comes with the tools that he's made to knock everything out. And rebuild it properly this isn't sponsored by the way i'm just saying this looks really comprehensive really easy to follow obviously this is not like some uh, overseas kit if you know what i mean and it was written in their language and then translated into ours and you can't follow none of the instructions it it's a it's a um just as a little extra he was nice enough to send me a few extra uh veins Kind of worries me. She was in there though, that's for sure. The seal retainer that was in there, it has a like a like an axle seal, like a wheel seal kind of in there where it's like got a spring on one end and it's just like a, a lips a lip seal. Cleaned it with some alcohol, put the new one in with the f flat side facing down and the lip facing in. It pushes in nice and tight and it's looking like it's sitting on the surface. Here are 
not supposed to forget to put this in before you put that seal in, the seal retainer, because this is what connects basically the dog ears on the pump to the dog ears on the vacuum pump. So yeah, you cannot forget to put that in. I want to make sure I do this part right because this is where I believe the leak was. All right, I think we are rebuilt turns freely, no binding. So the vacuum pump and the power steering pump are on, they're installed. Uh, the lines and everything are hooked back up, return lines, feed lines, all that. So now put the drain plug in, I'm gonna fill it with oil. Good. I'm also gonna give her the old marble treatment because maybe that'll help with the blow by. And also I was reading that when these pumps start to leak, these vacuum pumps, that um, I guess when they leak, it can look like it's got more blow by than it does. Kind of hoping that's the case. I don't know. Um, but with the rebuilt pump, and we'll put some marble in it, and maybe we can uh, clear up a little bit of that blow by. I cleaned the funnel out with brake clean. Don't start crying. Restone power steering fluid, 50,000 miles, anti-wear, all vehicles, all makes, all models. <sighs> Go ahead and start it and with these hydro boost systems. It sucks up some of the power steering fluid, so I'm gonna crank the wheel all the way to the left and to the right, let it suck it down, fill it back up, top it off. <laughs> what? <laughs> I had to unplug the sensor to get the power steering pump assembly out. It's hard to hear me maybe, but you see how there's, we're not leaking a lot or anything on the ground now, but look at this. Watch that cycle. That's the air conditioner. On, off. It's cycling too quick. That means that it's almost empty. See that? It's low on the fridge here. So, compressor's off, this is where it should be. It's gonna turn on, yep, pressure goes down, low. It's cycling off too quick. It needs to stay on and in here for a while. As soon as it gets to 50, that's the pressure switch to kick it on again. So we're gonna put some refrigerant in it, and we shouldn't hear it clicking, and we shouldn't see this gauge moving around so much. Stay on longer. You shouldn't hear it clicking like that. See how that needle's not moving a whole bunch? Let's 
go feel it inside. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's cold. Oh yeah. You're gonna need that in the Arizona summer. Now that those leaks are fixed, uh, Dash came in the mail. So let's see what's going on there. I just cracked open this box. Comes with the dash and what they call the glue, high temp. Uh, it's really just, I don't know, silicone, RTV silicone gasket maker, but they call it the glue. This is a nice cardboard box. I keep these around for, I cut them up and put them under the cars to soak up oil stains. There's like four different colors. There's gray, there's two kinds of gray, but one is called mist gray and one is called medium quartz, which is the light gray. This is the dark gray truck. You can tell on your, data tag on your door what kind of um, color you have. So if you look right here, this tells you right here, trim C3 is uh, mist gray. So here's a better look at the dash. Uh, you can see it's got cracks throughout. Uh, most of the big pieces are there, not a lot of chunks missing, but it is pretty bad. Somebody put this strip here to you know stop pieces from coming off. This is just to hold the dash together basically. Um, but what we're gonna have to do is there's screws here. One, two, three, four, five. There's five, five sixteenth screws, Phillips screws to take this strip out. We're gonna have to wipe this down and clean it up, set the other one on top. First of all, I just wanna make sure that it's gonna fit. Oh yeah. Dude, that's like literally perfect. It's the right color. It looks like it's gonna go fine. All right. Uh, the only thing you do have to do, I'll show you in a minute, you have to drill holes in these. Um, you gotta drill holes in these. They don't come with holes drilled in them. That's the only thing you have to do to it. These dashes are not very strong. Uh, cool. Now we gotta get these out. Five sixteenths. Yeah. So I got the dash flipped over. I have the holes drilled where the <clears throat> bolts go through that bolt it close to the windshield. This RTV is supposed to be the glue, like I said. I am just going to do where it says to kind of glue it. I'm just gonna probably use this whole thing. Oopsie daisies. Nice line by the glove box. Just burn the whole jug. Easy as pie. Slips over the top. There we go. And then after I screw it in, so there's five screws here, there's a screw on this end, there's a screw on that end, and once I screw that in, I'm gonna set some like books and stuff on top. Kind of push it down on the dash so the glue kind of, you know, so it's not it's popping up, you know. Yeah, then we let it sit overnight. So she sat over the weekend. Let's take a look underneath her one drop there, which isn't a big deal. We have nothing around here where the uh, vacuum pump is, so that leak is fixed. But we have a few drops here. All right, this is, um, this is tranny fluid. Yeah, definitely smells like tranny fluid. It's dripping off of this bar right here. So I've traced it to here. This quick connect, um, I'm pretty sure is leaking. I don't know if you can replace this part or if you, replace this clip if there's an o-ring in there i don't know so that green piece in there is an o-ring and it might be dry rotted and cracked and letting fluid through so i'll take it over to my old magic craftsman toolbox and find an o-ring that fits maybe that'll stop our leak if we're lucky
So I got the new O-ring in there and this piece goes in here and this is what the steel line pushes into to clip. Uh, but I pushed it in and one of the ears just busted right off. So that's no good. So I had to go up and get a few more retaining clips. So hopefully we can fix this problem today. Feels like this is going into overtime. Upon further inspection, I looked at the top of the line and the metal line has actually been rubbing long enough to wear a tiny pinhole in the very top. You can see it right here, that fluid coming right out. So there's where our leak truly is. So I took the line off, took it over to dad's house and he's going to help me braise that pinhole up right here. Just that little pinhole. All right, there is our fix. She's brazed up. Dad helped me out big time there by brazing that up. While I'm here at uh, Dad's house, I want to give you guys an update on the 1960 El Camino. If you've been following along with that, have a lot of videos out on this build. Um, just want to throw an update in here because I'm not over here all the time and Dad's still continuing on with it. This fender was really, really, really crunched in right here. It was beat in so bad that uh, it got hit to where it was hard to even mount the battery tray because it was um, discombobulated and it was very bad. So dad literally cut it out and welded in a new part from another 1960 El Camino fender cut it out right about here and I'll put a picture up right here of uh, what it looked like when he cut it out and put another piece in that's the fender he cut the front piece from you can see where the back of the fender and this is the front that he cut off and cut a little back there and welded it on it looks pretty seamless huh and that neat looks perfect and then he spray primed it and then right here cut out a piece right here this was caved in and uh, had some rust holes in it so he cut that out and he made a new piece from scratch and put it in and then right here too this piece was part of a uh, front part of the door rotted out on the bottom really dented in caved in cut it out another piece cut out rear part of the door this was kind of like that and it was right here cut it out welded a new piece of metal in this is all new metal there's not even an entire part of the rear quarter because it was just literally gone it was rusted out it was just an open air hole right here so I was able to cut it out up to here and put new metal in most of the lower metal on this is all new coming out really really nicely just wanted to update you guys on that dad's doing a really really great job on that so we got some parts in from rock auto let's see what they are so we got the shoes this is probably the rotor oh yeah yes this is what we need the wheel cylinders mm. <laughs> Looks good. Just cleaning up the nails that go in the boots on the wheel cylinder and the bolts that bolt the wheel cylinder to the truck and everything. Since I knew these lines would be open for at least a few days, I went ahead and put plastic baggies over them. Well, one, it caught some fluid and also it stopped. Uh, any moisture from getting in there. Brake fluid is um, one of the only fluids, well you don't want water in anything, but brake fluid, the properties of brake fluid actually attract water, so. I'm gonna try and put the whole kit and caboodle on there. Come on, sort of shift around what we're doing here. Break. There we go. Spray these down with brake clean one more time. Shout out to O'Reilly's for cutting these drums. They're the only ones who will do it. Nobody else will cut these drums. So 
I'm glad that they still offer that service. When I pressed the brake, that light came on, but these ones didn't. I ended up having no reverse lights, no brake lights, and no turn signals. So I wanted to tackle that problem. Uh, I tackled the turn signals first. So what was going on with those was that. So if you'll remember when I had no signals. So I was just messing around with it. Didn't know if it was a flasher or what. But I was playing around to see if my hazards came on. My hazards don't come on, but when you press that in, now I'm getting turn signals. Um, but my flashers don't work, and I replaced the flasher uh, module, this right here. Um, this is your turn signal, this is your flasher uh, module. I replaced this with a known good, and the flasher still didn't want to come on. I just replaced the bulbs. The bulbs were bad, and the bulbs were bad in the top. That's why the brake lights wouldn't come on. The other filament was burnt. Now on to the major issue I was having, which was the uh, the ABS and the brake light won't shut off. And so I did some troubleshooting. A lot of people, nine times out of 10, when the ABS and brake light come on, it's that rear ABS sensor that's on top of the rear differential. Um, but I didn't think to check there because um, most of the time when that goes bad, people say your speedometer starts to act up. My speedometer and odometer weren't acting up. You know, since the back brakes were trashed, it could have been the proportioning valve. I thought something with those rear brakes being bad and leaking and needing to be replaced might have set that ABS light off. Well, this proportioning valve is hooked to your master cylinder. I went to bleed the brakes. This was really, really, really low. So what happens is, is if fluid leaks out, there's a slide in here that will go one way or the other if it, if it recognizes one of the reservoirs are out of fluid because maybe because there's a malfunction, either a brake line broke or a wheel cylinder leaked out. Let's say all your fluid ran out of the back reservoir for your rear brakes. This slide would move to one side and only put pressure to your front brakes. Likewise, if your fronts were leaking and they leaked out, that slide would push the other way and only put pressure to your rear brakes. So it's a safety mechanism. And if that slide moves, it'll um, engage this switch and turn your light on. But you can check that proportioning valve right here, but the pin is flush. So the pin has not moved, that's not the problem. So then I tried something else. You know, these ABS systems are kind of primitive. So I got underneath the dash and this is the ABS unit right here. This is the ABS module box. I unplugged it and plugged it back in, trying to maybe reset it, and that didn't do anything. The, the light is still on. So I said, well, let's go check the rear differential ABS sensor. And I pulled it out already, and it's right here. So this is the ABS sensor that goes on top of the differential that I pulled out. And there is a way to check these. So here's the voltmeter. It's not reading anything. So we get the new switch. This was like 20, $21 from uh, O'Reilly's. Boom. See that? Oops, lost my thing here. 1.9, 1.8 volts, or 1.8 ohms of resistance. So I'm pretty sure, I'm like 99% sure at this point this is our problem. Let's put it back in there, hook everything up, and see if that light goes out because it just aggravates me, those lights being on, when I know there's nothing wrong with the system. Goes in that hole, one bolt, and then your uh, e-brake and brake line bolt up to it, and that's it. Right, moment of truth. Should go out, and then it'll read and see if it'll come back on, like if it senses there's a problem. So let's go ahead and turn the truck on. It takes like, I don't know, 10 seconds. I'll report back. When I bought this truck, 
one of the tires was leaking and I thought, oh, well, the tire's bad. But when I was washing the truck, getting water everywhere, I noticed that if you take a close look, you can see that valve stem is messed up. All right, she's all cleaned up. I detailed her all out. Let's go take her for a test spin and take some pictures of her and put her on the interwebs. Oh yeah, she sounds good and healthy. Ain't nothing wrong with this old girl. Not a dang thing. Transmission's doing just fine. We're getting about a healthy 40 miles an hour. No more anti-lock light. I put some uh, water in the washer fluid, so no more washer light and no more brake light. So we're good to go. She pulls like a bear. Oh yeah, look how nice she cleaned up. Second gen extended cab 12 valve. Running like a freight train, baby. No smoke coming out the tailpipe or blue smoke. Yeah, she's healthy. Interior. She's a good old truck. Almost no blow by. All she needed was a little bit of attention. Maybe that marble mist oil is working its way in there with the oil. That's a lot better than what it was. Looking underneath where the breather tube is, there's nothing coming out. So yeah, it is a healthy truck, it's healthy. No training leaks, no engine leaks anymore. So I really just wanted to document me working on this truck for you guys, going through it, fixing all the piddly stuff and whatnot, but um, I am putting it up for sale. If you are interested, my email's right here. I'm gonna be asking 8,500 for it. I'm gonna list it here locally too. Um, but really the main goal is just the content for you guys. But if somebody is interested in it, you know, you can email me there. If you got a first or second gen coming, you're interested in selling, I'm in Tucson, Arizona, but uh, I am willing to travel. Uh, hopefully somewhere in the Southwest would be ideal. 89 and 97 Dodge Cummins. Definitely interested in buying it. Thank you guys for watching. I know this is a little switch up from what I normally post, you know, pre-1980, abandoned, will it run, stuff like that, but I'm interested in these trucks. I have a passion for these trucks, and the reason is, is I grew up in a first-gen Cummins. My dad still has the first-gen Cummins I grew up in. It's a 93 extended cab, two-wheel drive, 12-valve, two-tone gray truck. Love that truck, still has it to this day. Just turned over 200,000 miles. So subscribe, like, and we'll see you in the next one.